What is up? Rahul here from the GSD. We're going to go over some Sunday planning so we get to prepare ourselves to win and dominate the week. We'll feel good. Best of all, this takes about, I don't know, anywhere between 30 to 60 minutes every weekend, but you'll get so far ahead of your week, it'll shine and make the week so much more pleasurable. So I'm setting this up for my team, publishing this on YouTube. Maybe it'll help you. And if it does, subscribe, drop a comment below. I would love to hear your feedback. All right, let's share the screen. All right, here we go. GSD, getting ahead by Sunday preparation. We want to prepare to win our week ahead. This is for our setter and sales team primarily. Uh, plan your Sunday for a fun day on Monday and beyond. Um, I'm calling this the sweepstakes because I call them calendar sweeps, and it includes quite a few different tasks to do. Um, so when you're going through your calendars, and this is for my team specifically, and you can take it to yours or use it yourself, um, go through your calendars, go back during the week, audit everything, every appointment you had, any follow-up, cross-check it against the CRM that you logged your notes, move those calendars forward. So if there's a follow-up, make sure you didn't forget. So it'll be kind of like your little backstop so you didn't leak a lead or an opportunity. Um, if you want to use, like if it's a follow-up, and you're putting it in your calendar for Monday morning, and it's not a dedicated time, but you want to check in on some level in the sense of like tagging them, texting them, DMing them, inviting them to a group, dropping an email, you can mark your calendar as free so it doesn't actually take a booked call uh, slot, and then you can just move it forward. So it's a reminder system. Uh, busy ones are tasks that you actually have to do at that particular time. Use your alerts, the five and 15 minutes, of course, the default features in your Google Calendar. And if you don't have those defaults, you can always edit it in the settings. This is optional. This is what I use personally, color codes. So I know what the color means just by visualing, visualizing it. So blue means these are my appointments. Don't be late. Be ready. Five minutes before preparing, reading the notes. And right when that clock strikes the time, boom, the dial's going out. Green is for follow-ups with no appointments. So this means it's in the free mode, like your calendar is set to free. In case you do get a book call or something higher priority, it goes there. Then you keep moving it forward so you don't leak your leads. Red is admin, stuff you need to do that's administrative stuff. I tend to do that towards the tail of the day. If it's important, then I'll move it up to the front and I'll mark it as busy. And if it's something towards the tail end of the day that I need to get done, um, I'll put it after 6 p.m. Typically for me personally, for you guys, if you have like hours that you're working, then put it in within that container. Purple, it's to do, but not urgent. So those lingering things, they're just not due this week, this month. And sometimes they'll just fall off your calendar because they're not that important because you haven't prioritized it, Okay. Um, CRM. So step number one is the calendar sweeps. And then we're going to go to our CRM pipeline, review it, organize it, make sure it's in the right deal stages. The notes are logged. The next logical steps are logged. Uh, so you feel uh, comfortable and keep in mind when you're logging your CRM notes, like these are the eyes and ears of the whole entity, the company. So if it's you by yourself, if you're watching this on YouTube and not my team, um, go ahead and log the notes as if you're writing them for somebody else, because two things happen. Number one, if you do hire somebody, they actually have very good notes. They're not reliant on you. And then you become the bottleneck. Number two is when you write really good notes, your follow-up game is so much more precise. You know exactly what you're talking about. You give the customer way more confidence that you paid attention. So, um, and it's important. So, and then you tend to memorize your notes over time. You'll, you'll work that muscle. So you'll have a better memory recall. Next step in our sweeps, number three, we're going to DM people. So start your DMs. Like if there's follow-ups, you can start continue the conversations if you want mark the ones that are unread uh, or mark things that you've read unread that you do want to follow up um, just so it's black and bold um, so when you get in on monday and then you can start new conversations like if we have a master class or something that you wanted to tag them in you can always just start 20 30 conversations really quick so by monday you already have active engagement active conversations uh, so we're going to kind of ping pong a couple things around from when we go to number seven but we're going to be, when we DM people, we can tag them and DM saying, hey, I just tagged you in the training. You get it. So what we're doing is starting those conversations again um, to mature them and make them a little bit more intimate, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, comments on the profiles and groups. So go through whoever's profile you're managing, yourselves, the influencer, whoever, and inside the groups, just look for naked comments, things that we missed that we didn't respond to. Uh, go ahead and like and, and reply back, get them whatever they needed. Um, keep that in mind. Bumping posts. This takes maybe a couple minutes. 
go to older posts that trended. So if you're if you're the setter, you're the salesperson, and you need to manufacture your own appointments and sales and leads and all that stuff, uh, go ahead and bump old posts. So if something trended or is about to trend, something with 40 comments and it's like a week or two old, you can re-bump it, comment on it, like it, tag people, and then it'll start to trend. Okay, and you can go back as far as you feel like. So if we're doing a masterclass like we are on ads, then go back to older ad stuff and saying, hey, this is awesome. We're going to be doing a new training. And then it can be engaged by all the people that had previously liked it, engaged with it, so you can get more um, attendees. Okay, uh, reactivate 10 to 30 comments. I kind of touched that over here on number three. Um, tag leads. So as you're going through things, like when you're paying attention to your leads, you can comment on their posts, you can engage with their posts, you can tag all the leads that you're working in posts, older leads, prospects, um, nurture things they will love. Um, they will love on relevant topics. So if somebody was interested in ads, tag them in ad stuff. If somebody was interested in organic, tag them in organic stuff. If they need help with DMs, tag them in our DM trainings. Obviously, do you guys already know the drill? This is so I just want to reiterate this because repetition is the mother of success. Um, and sometimes you may forget one of these, and these all work together. So it's important we kind of keep this like a symphony. Like if our if our drum leader or our flute person just didn't show up, think of every part of this process as that orchestra. We just need to show up together. Okay. So all of this goes together. Um, get them the resources they need. So if they, if we offered them a free training, our agency foundations of 1.0, get them that. If they're interested in 2.0, get them in the Diamond Club, which is seven dollars. Um, we can give them the trainings, tag them in our student wins and the guidance tab. And what are the next logical steps? Always think outcome. What's the next logical steps based on your position and what you do? Okay, uh, mix and match follow up. Mix and match follow up. This is what it means. Like I touched on it a little bit earlier too, but I'm going to identify it here so it's clear. So if I'm talking to somebody on, let's say LinkedIn, and here, here's an example. I'm talking to one of my buddies right now and we're, we're doing a collaboration. I told him I'd take some notes. I emailed him my bullet point notes. I hit send. And then I shot him a text and said, hey, shot you the email. I went to DMs and I just dropped a voice note and said, hey, brother, I just shot you a text to check your DMs, but whatever you see first, just check the email because all roads lead to that email. And then a day, the next day, followed up, tagged him in one of my posts where we first started the conversation. And I'm like, hey, my man, I just shot you over the deets we talked about. Check the email and let's have a conversation thereafter. So I'm kind of using the whole tools, the channels, at my disposal. Uh, so hopefully I just moved my mic over. So hopefully the audio picked up this whole thing. Um, anyways, that's how I mix and match. So if I, if I call even think about it from like a personal level, let's say you're calling your buddy to meet you at the gym. I'll sh shoot him a call. No answer. I don't leave a voice message. What do I do next? I shoot him a text like, yo, just called you. I want to be at the gym at 12. See you there. Right. Question mark. And then I might get a response on text. If I don't get the response on text, I'm going to call him back and be like, hey, we still meeting. Now, with our prospects, we have them on different channels that are more appropriate. We have them on LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're starting those communications, you can progress the channels to email, to phone, to WhatsApp, to whatever. So it's more intimacy. So you can use them all together um, in conjunction to bounce them off each other. Text somebody saying, hey, check email. And the email has the elaborate thing. Kind of like a lot of TikTokers. They do these short one-minute video TikToks and say, check out the rest on my YouTube channel. Then they drive the traffic to YouTube. Then from YouTube to their landing page, from their landing page to their group, from their group to a sales call. So we're just mixing and matching the follow-up. Let me know if there's any questions on mix and match because to me, it's second nature because I've done this for so long. To you, it might be a little bit confusing. So you can follow a workflow. So let's train on that very specifically because it's important. And then preparation for the morning meetings. This is for my internal team. Every day we talk for about an hour. We just meet, train, savage, role play, prepare um, before our before our launch of our week and before the launch of our day every single day, Monday through Friday, sometimes on weekends. Um, that's how much our culture means to us is that we want people self-aware, training, and then there's always something ahead. So we don't have a ceiling on education. It's always, I got here, now I want more. Got there, I want more. So that's kind of our culture. Um, and if you want to be a part of it, let me know.
Um, we have, we have coaching training and, and if we might be hiring or we can place you somewhere if you're a setter. Um, okay. So preparation for the morning meeting, have the questions ready, any recommendations you want to bring up that you found a better way, something you want to share like wins. Like I got 10 appointments and a record time. This is awesome. They all showed up for the call. Share your wins, celebrate yourself. That's important. I want to hear the wins because I don't want to ask, Hey, what wins you have? Fucking make me brag about you. Tell me proactive. Um, end of the week outcomes you want to hit. So on Monday, what's our future look like? What's our end of week feel like and look like? Because if our goal is, let's say 15 sales calls booked that show up, how are we going to hit it? What's your plan? What's your goal? What happens if they don't? Just be prepared. All I need to know is the number. And then I'm going to hold you accountable to that number. But it's you're going to it's going to be your job to request help and make sure that you're going to have the roadmap to get to that micro goal. And then, of course, we have our long goal, our macro goal. Okay. Um, and the better the conversations you have, the better the results you'll always get. That goes without saying. It comes with preparation. It comes with training. You want to have fun with this. You got to like doing what you're doing. Then it becomes less of work tasks. Um, but education and training and getting the result and failing and trying and trying again and then finding your rhythm is the most important part because effort is one thing, skill is another. In the beginning, most people will have lots of high effort and then their skill will follow. Some people just have effort the rest of their lives and the skill never follows. So just be self-aware that we're looking for the skill, not the energy that's outputted at times because then we want to have efficiency. Think Lionel Messi. The dude walks more than anybody in the field, but you give him the ball, dude's going to score efficiency. Same thing with a really good setter. You don't need to have a thousand conversations. You just need to have like 15 and you're going to book like three, four. Um, same things with salespeople. Okay. And just more efficient. And we don't get wins. Think about how that feels. Does it feel frustrating? Do you feel down on yourself? Do you feel why me? Now flip that feeling. The good news is you get to control this. So the more you level up your skill, the more you get help, the more you role play, the more you practice your craft, the better it is. So last question, what time is it? All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, drop any comments, subscribe to the channel. I got a lot of videos that are already on this channel that are pretty badass. I want to increase my view count. And with you guys, it helps me a lot. Uh, and then jump in our Facebook group. We do everything active every single day. We got some sort of content, like whether it's just a post and a tip or twice a week, we're going live in our diamond club um, Thursday. It's free for the group. And then we have our private sessions thereafter on a private zoom. So you can always jump on that too. That is really low cost uh, foot in the door offers that we do for ourselves and teach other people. It's $7 to get access to that. So it's pretty much less than a burrito at Chipotle. Um, all right, guys, see you on the next video.